Hey, what's going on, guys? We are back with our next video. We took a poll on my Twitter uh, for what the next video is going to be about. And you guys, uh, uh, the choices were uh, Divic Boxes slash p The Possession, which is a movie that's based on real events. Uh, Jaws, the shark movie. Um, Ghost and Demon stuff and Haunted Dolls. <coughs> now, Jaws won. So I'm going to jump into this. And we are going to sit here and we are going to talk about, I'm going to tell you guys the true, what, what a lot of people believe is the true story and the real inspiration behind the movie Jaws. If you've never seen the movie Jaws, it's a story about a shark, I believe it's a great white shark if I'm remembering correctly, that terrorizes uh, the ocean around a uh, fake, I guess you could call it, uh, according to... To everything I've read, it was a fake place, but it terrorized the shark line or the shoreline of this fake like beach resort town. And so we're just going to go ahead and jump into it. It's called the real story of the great man eater Jaws. All right. And I looked up some shark facts before this. That way you guys can uh, kind of keep some stuff like in your heads and in mind while I'm sitting here reading this. Um, and there's a lot of weird stuff about this one anyway. So... Uh, but yes, the average great white shark, because the shark in question that I'm going to read about, um, the articles I read never said it was a great white. Um, but seeing that it was the inspiration for Jaws, I figured I would look up great white and average and other sharks. So the average great white shark swims between 28 and, uh, or 25 and 35 miles per hour. They believe 35 miles per hour in short bursts, which I believe is when it's going in for the attack. Um, oh, sorry, I had to adjust my seat. Um, other than that, they, they really think great whites swim between 28 and 30 miles an hour. A regular shark or other sharks, sorry, other sharks, they believe swim between like kind of around the same, around 31 miles an hour. Um, the average weight of a great white is 1500 to 2400 pounds and for a female shark they can get between 15 to 21 feet long and for males they can get between 11 and 13 feet uh, it's also believed that uh, by scientists they they've said this that the great white shark swims 10 times greater than that of a human uh, its speed is that much faster so and the other sharks being either a little bit faster or a little bit slower than the great white, it'll probably be around the same. So if we swim three feet per second, they'll swim 30. If we swim five, they swim 50. So we're, I just wanted to get those little facts out there for you. And we're going to jump straight into this. Um, the, the real inspiration, I guess the author says this wasn't an inspiration, but if you watch Jaws and then finding out about this, either it is an inspiration or this dude has a really, really good mind to write a book. I can't remember the author's name, but he wrote the book Jaws or whatever it was called that the movie was made from. Um, it was the 4th of July weekend in 2016 or 1916, sorry, 1916. And back then, uh, many Americans believed that sharks weren't dangerous. In fact, many scientists at the time believed that they were just another shy fish that swam offshore and posed no threat to humans. Uh, they even said that sharks were not powerful enough to maul a human. Fishermen and sailors and older People that were out on boats and out in the water that told stories of sharks doing these things were believed to be crazy or just telling sea tales like they would tell of the Kraken and giant sea serpents. And the 4th of July weekend of 1916 uh, in New Jersey, they found out different. All right. Um, at that point in time, there was a war going on in Europe. There was a polio epidemic in New York. And so people would travel or to try to stay away from having to go to war, stay, however you want to word it. They've traveled to the New Jersey coastline uh, to vacation and just have a good time and get rid of the stress they were dealing with at the time. Oh, one of these people with whom our story begins was named Charles Van Sant. 
Uh, he was staying at, I believe he was staying anyway, because it's the only one mentioned, the Ingleside Hotel. He stepped out, it was a beachfront hotel, and he, he left the hotel to go swimming in the Atlantic Ocean with his Chesapeake Bay Retriever. As he began to swim, or he waded out into the surf with his dog, and they began to swim, and as they did, a dark fin sliced through the water uh, that was three and a half feet deep, by the way, and clamped onto his left leg and wouldn't let go. Other beachgoers and citizens formed a human chain trying to pull him out of whatever creature he was in the grasp of. The shark didn't let go until it started scraping along the bottom of the sandbar on sand and pebbles in the shallower water. They carried Van Sant into the lobby of the Ingleside Hotel where he bled to death. The attending physician found an abnormal cause of death. A shark bite. Back then, like I said, they didn't. They thought sharks were harmless. So, of course, it's going to be abnormal. Um, the Philadelphia Public Ledger um, stated, Bathers need have no fear of sharks. Uh, experts dis dismissed the attack on Van Sant as a freak incident in which the shark was actually trying to attack the dog swimming near him. This happened in Beach Haven, New Jersey. Okay, <clears throat> so again, like I said back then, they thought sharks weren't harmful. They found out different. It clamped onto his leg and he ended up bleeding to death. And they ended up trying to make the excuse, oh, it was trying to attack the dog. Five days later, 45 miles north of Beach Haven in Spring Lake, Charles Bruder swam out into the water. Uh, he, uh, Charles Bruder was, where's it at? Right here. I got it typed up right here. He was a bellboy at the Essex and Sussex Hotel, and he was on his lunch break. And while he was swimming, the shark, 130 yards from shore, or he was 130 yards from shore, attacked him and bit off his left leg above the knee and his right leg just below the knee. Lifeguards, <coughs> sorry guys, pull, lifeguards pulled Bruder to the shore and there were women on the shore that fainted at the sight of what they were seeing and there was nothing that could be done to save him so he died so right there from on the 1st of July and then on the 6th of July so a five day period that's already two attacks where two people died while an assistant curator at New York's American Museum of Natural History who examined Bruder's body they declared the mutilation the work of a killer whale, and others clung to the belief that a giant tuna or giant sea turtle must have been the one that attacked him. Some conspiracy theorists believe the attack was the work of a shark, and that the shark was trained by Germans to follow their U-boats and strike American bathers. Tying back in with the war and everything else that was going on, Conspiracy theorists were weird back then, too. Okay? <laughs> they think it was a German trained shark that uh, was trained to follow their U boats and attack us. And, and, and back then, like I was saying, because it was so, they didn't think that sharks were harmful, it was a conspiracy theory to think that sharks would do that. You were called a conspiracy theorist or crazy to think that. After Bruder's uh, attack and death, and after the two attacks, protective nets were installed along the Jersey Shore, and boats patrolled the water, but none of it helped at all. On July 12th, so seven days later, in the span of 12 days, 25 miles north of Spring Lake, in Matawan Creek, not far from Raritan Bay, Lester Stillwell, who was 11, and this is one of the weird things I thought about reading this article. He was only 11. He was a boy. He was a kid. He, and he was the boss of, in a basket weaving factory. But if you think back then, in the early 1900s, uh, especially 1916, like right before the Great Depression, 
of course kids were going to work so they could supply for their family. They would quit going to school to go to work so they could supply for their family. Uh, it didn't just happen in Little House on the Prairie days. Come on. Um, but he was 11, and he and the kids he was in charge of in this basket weaving factory were swimming in a local water hole because it was 96 degrees out. To them, it was hot, so they decided to break for the afternoon and go swimming. Um, and they went to uh, the local water hole, uh, Manitowan Creek. Oh, excuse me. As he was floating on the water, a dark shape emerged from the deep and grabbed him by the stomach and pulled him under. Uh, he was only able to resurface temporarily to let out pretty much like a death scream. Uh, he was pretty much dead. He screamed and the shark pulled him back under. The rest of the terrified boys ran down Matatuan, Matatuan's main street yelling for help. A local tailor named Stanley Fisher joined other people from the town, other citizens, rushing to the scene and from a rowboat searched the waters with a pole. No signs of life were found and the rescue for, what was his name? Stillwell. Sorry, Stillwell. The rescue for Stillwell turned into a recovery mission. When Fisher spotted Stillwell's body, the boy's parents were watching from the banks. Fisher dove into the water or into the creek, knowing that a killer shark lurked nearby. As Fisher retrieved the lifeless body, the shark reappeared and tore into his right leg. It uh, he was dragged to shore by his neighbors who desperately attempted to bandage the wound, but he passed away hours later. 30 minutes after the attack on Fisher, a shark bit 12-year-old Joseph Dunn near the mouth of Matatuan Creek, but Dunn managed to survive. After that, the shark became public enemy number one with bounty notices promising a $100 reward to the person or persons killing the shark believed to be in Manitowan Creek. Now, back then, like I was telling my old lady, <clears throat> back then it was 1916, $100 is probably like a thousand or more dollars now. Um, it, it was a lot of money back then, especially right before the Great Depression. So... A hundred dollar reward that equaled to mobs with spears and pitchforks uh, going down on the banks of the creek with crews of shark hunters going into the water. Posses and other people fired shotguns and tossed dynamite at anything they saw move in the water, whether it was a whale, a dolphin, a turtle, a shark, an octopus, a jellyfish, a clownfish, whatever. They shot it or threw dynamite at it. Telegrams were sent to the White House from panicked Americans urging the federal government to do something to stop the rogue man-eater. Two days after the attack in Manitowan Creek, President Woodrow Wilson convened a cabinet meeting to discuss the shark horror gripping the New Jersey coast. He tasked the Treasury Secretary to lead a war on sharks that included efforts by the U.S. Coast Guard cutters and the Bureau of Fisheries to rout the sea terrors. The same morning that that was going on, a small motorboat off the coast of South Amboy, New Jersey, uh, that was piloted by Michael Schleiser, who was a shark hunter, spotted a black tail fin in a dragnet, which if you don't know what a dragnet is, it's a net they throw off the back of the boat and it drags along the bottom of the ocean to pick stuff up. Um, if I'm remembering correctly from school. He uh, saw a black tail fin in the dragnet that he had cast in Raritan Bay. Um, as he got closer, he saw that it was a shark and he struck the shark repeatedly on the head with a broken oar handle until it was dead and no longer moved back on land. He gutted the shark and human bones were reportedly found inside, but there, they were never identified. Whether that shark was indeed the one that was attacking or whether it was just a different shark there were no more attacks on the Jersey Shore for the rest of the summer. 
So, and, and, and that's the real true story behind Jaws, or the real inspiration, I'll say. Um, in reading this one, again, I thought it was weird. Like, I kept having to tell myself this was back in 1916. And I'm going to say it again. They thought sharks were harmless. They were told by scientists and by the Philadelphia Public Ledger that they had nothing to worry about. That sharks were harmless and shy fish that just swam offshore and they posed no threat. They can't maul you. But remember, they weigh between 15 to 2,400 pounds. Uh, females can get between 15 to 21 feet. Males get between 11 and 13 feet. They can swim between 28 and 30 miles an hour. So and me personally, I don't know why you wouldn't think something that big wasn't harmless unless you spent time in the ocean swimming with whales. And you were like, oh, they're just another type of whale or another type of fish that are cool and they're not going to do anything to us. I could kind of see that. And then you were thought to be a conspiracy theorist if you thought it was a shark attack instead of a turtle or a killer whale. And I just thought that stuff was kind of weird. I wanted to share this with you guys. I told you guys I would make this video for it. Uh, but again, that is the real story or the real inspiration of the great man-eater Jaws. Um, go ahead and smash that like and subscribe button here on YouTube. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter at IronGlaze89. Um, the next video I'm going to do is going to be about the movie The Possession and slash Dybbuk Boxes. I hope to talk to you guys later. I hope you guys watch this and like this and enjoy this. Have a good one. See you later.